Good afternoon from uh, Room 2 in the Montreal Heart Institute. My name is uh, Anita Asgar. I'm joined by Dr. Raoul Bona, Dr. Walid Ben Ali, and our, our fellow Ahmad Hayek, and our nurses, Danielle, Rachel, and our anesthetist, uh, Maggie Raymond. So we have another case of TAVR for you this week. If I could just see my slides, we'll present our case to you. So this is an 86-year-old female, severe symptomatic aortic stenosis. She's got a medical history of obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia. She also has coronary artery disease, and we'll show you her images shortly. She had a recent angioplasty of the LAD on the 19th of June. At the time, she was found to have a ramus that was occluded, a 50% lesion in the circumflex. So she had PCI with a drug-eluting stent uh, in the LAD. Next slide. She was admitted at this particular time with progressive dyspnea on exertion with symptomatic aortic stenosis. Her ECG showed sinus rhythm at 64 beats per minute, and her echo shows preserved ejection fraction at 60%, quite a small left ventricle, 34-26, mild uh, pulmonary pressure elevation, a mean aortic gradient of 55 with a calculated valve area of 0.64. In terms of other significant valve disease, she has only trace mitral regurgitation, trace aortic insufficiency, and 1 plus TR. She had a right heart cath, which showed uh, LA, RA pressures uh, a mean of 7, RV pressures 45 over 5 with, a mean, with an end diastolic of 12, and a mean PA pressure of 27. Next slide. So before we do this, I'm going to just show you the angiogram that she had. So if we can just switch to the angiogram. And we can just play uh, the images. So you can see this is the image uh, of the left coronary system. So you can see she's got an occluded ramus quite proximally. No real significant lesion in the circ. Next image. So she had this lesion in the LAD. Next uh, image. You can see sort of mid, prox to mid lesion of the LAD, not much in terms of a first diagonal, very small first diagonal. Okay, so if we can just go back to the slides, we'll show the, uh, the rest of the angiogram afterwards. So she had a CT scan which showed a perimeter of the aortic annulus of 69, almost 70, with an area measured at 368 millimeters squared, LVOT of 21.8. You can see the, LV the annulus itself is not calcified. Next slide. The sinuses measure you know, their limit in terms of when we talk about our valve selection. And so we have sinuses that measure 26 by 26 by 27. You can see the pattern of calcification on the aortic valve leaflets. You can see calcification also in the LAD on that image on the CT scan. Next slide. These are our angulations. We'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. Next slide. And this is her vascular access. So we already have gotten vascular access. Uh, we have our sheath in place. So you can just go to the next slide. So just to let you know the plan for the procedure, we've already done our vascular access under ultrasound guidance. We've done our me measurement for the Manta closure device. And one of the things we want to talk about is, you know, how do you choose a TAVR valve in the setting of coronary disease? So I don't know, um, Raul, if you have any thoughts about this, but we've seen that she has a lesion in the LAD. Uh, we've seen the size of the valve. It's relatively small. The sinuses are limited for an evolute. Um, I didn't show you, but there is an image showing that the left coronary height was approximately seven millimeters above the annular plane. So, you know, Raul, well, what do you think about how do you choose a valve for a patient like this? What are your thoughts? Well, usually, you know, you have uh, more towards a uh, sapient valve than the evolute valve uh, at the time. But here, you have not the sinus for the evolute that give you directly to the uh, sapient. And I think that uh, give you the open work for the future. Right. If she needed at 86 years old. That's true. I mean, we don't know. She did have um, a, not a nuclear imaging. It did show ischemia in the territory of the LAD. So it's hard to know if that shortness of breath is just the aortic stenosis or if that's a compo component of her um, coronary artery disease as well. In terms of when would you do the angioplasty, would you prefer to do it before the TAVR, after the TAVR, during? What are your thoughts? 
uh, without me, you know, thought about that is the fact that sometimes and before in the old age, we were saying, take care of the valve and almost forget the coronaries in the patient that have angina with a tight aortic stenosis. For the time being, now we understand that's probably the two player role and it's worthwhile to fix. <clears throat> and we used to fix the coronary before at the time of the cat, uh, just by, you know, a practical way of to deal with the patient and don't bring the patient so many times afterward mm -hmm. to the, the cat lab. Yeah. So in fact, in this case, if we can go back to the angiogram, the decision was made on Monday when she had her coronary angiogram. If we can just show, um, show some images, she did have the stent done at the same time and the decision was, was felt to, to do the angioplasty right away, especially considering she's got a low left coronary height. We know we're going to put an Edwards to try to preserve coronary access, but we don't want to have the concern of not being able to get back in. We have documented ischemia, so the decision was to, to go ahead and stent it, which I, I think is completely reasonable. The, the only small concern I will have that to be careful with this patient, all patients who have so many contrasts, and you need to evaluate the amount of contrast you have done for the angioplasty before repeating that about two days after for the uh, the TAVR. Correct. I mean, uh, these patients have a lot of exams that require contrast. So she had her CT scan last week. She had her angioplasty on Monday, and now we're doing her TAVR 48 hours later. Her creatinine is preserved. She does have a GFR around 30 mils per minute, but her creatinine did, did not bump after her PCI. So um, if we just go back to the slides, you can see they got a good result uh, with the angioplasty. Still some distal disease, but um, overall good. So maybe, um, Walid, if you want to just walk us through what our procedural plan is today, and then we'll get going. Oh, thanks, Anita. We are uh, planning, as discussed uh, with Anita and uh, with Raul, to uh, <coughs> to deploy uh, Sapien uh, valve. Uh, based on our measurement, we will uh, use a 23 Sapien valve. The main access will be the right femoral artery. Uh, we are going to cross the valve right away uh, with Raul and uh, put a, uh, a safari uh, wire, uh, extra small safari wire. Go ahead. Okay, so I guess we'll get going. So Raul's going to yeah. cross the valve for us. Maybe we could just uh, dim the lights a little bit. Can we just baisser les lumières en haut, s'il te plaît? C'est parfait, merci. We've got a five French AL1 catheter in place. And Raul's going to try. Oh, sorry. No, it looks like a JR. <laughs> we don't have. A... We don't have it. So we're back ordered on the AL1. We have a JR. And we're in our three cusp view. So I think obviously for Evolute, there's a fashion to do more in the two cusp. But for, I think, um, you know, for an Edwards, we're happy in the three cusp. I don't think there's any need to move the image intensifier. You can see that the valve leaflets themselves are quite calcified. So here you see the challenge of trying to get this catheter to go through that very calcified valve. The wire is through. So we have bilateral femoral access. Uh, there certainly are, you know, a school of thought to go radial. We prefer to have bilateral femoral, particularly in this particular case where we have obesity. There's a concern for vascular complications to have a quick crossover and be able to get a, around and, and manage the vascular access. So there's no one right way, but that's the way we've chosen to go. <coughs> So maybe in the meantime, we can just show our aortogram as we're just switching out to put a pigtail to measure the gradient. So if you could just play our aortogram that we did for you earlier. We did an aortogram initially. We'll show you that. It's 
Comment elle a été? Elle fait merci. Uh, can we show the aortogram from the beginning of the case, please? Yep. So you can see the one of the leaflets is completely immobilized, very heavily calcified. We see the coronary heights. Okay, so we put tails in. We're gonna measure pressure for you. You want it? And we have our pressure gradient. We're just gonna wait for a pressure measurement here. On est où avec la valve? C'est prêt. Okay. Would you like to be on RAO to see where the apex is? Can do, is? so we can go to RAO uh, just to make sure that our pigtail is well situated in the apex. So our in-diastolic pressure is 22. Combien? Okay, so 51 of gradient, mean gradient. So our pigtail looks relatively well positioned. If we could just advance the other pigtail, and we'll bring our safari in. Piece of it. As you can see, a lot of the decision making and thought process goes in well before the patient ever gets to the table to try to understand how to manage the coronary disease. We will talk once the valve is in place. You know, what do you do for your antiplatelets? How do you manage that in these patients, particularly with the small valves where there may be a question of early halt in these types of patients? What's the optimal strategy for anticoagulation or antiplatelet therapy? C'est bon. On peut retourner dans l'autre incident, s'il te plaît. OK, c'est bon, je vais le faire. Off fleuro. OK, on peut prendre la valve. Juste montre-moi euh, le, le, le guide, s'il te plaît. Parfait. Okay, so 23 nominal. So we pace on the wire, so we will uh, connect our uh, alligator clips to the wire itself once the device is in, and we'll pace directly on the wire. Just a done. Yeah. Probably now as advancing our uh, uh, the deploy, the delivery system, we have to discuss a little bit the, the depth of deployment uh, as the tendency now is to go a little bit higher, but in this particular oh, case... Peu. Ouais, oh, ça fait mal, je pense. In this particular case, with the, the height of the coronary artery, what are you aiming, uh, Raoul, as uh, de deployment depth in this case? Ça va ou tu veux quelque chose? So we're, we're just talking about, you know, what's the best deployment. And so to the point that the coronary is a little bit low, as opposed to maybe a really high deployment, sort of 80-20 or 90-10, probably going to err a little bit more on a lower deployment, maybe more 50-50. On press sèche ou mouillé? Sèche. Ah, okay, here we come. Let's see if they met these ecrans doigts. They don't have doigts. Let's do it. There's an angle in the ecran. Ah, wait, s'il te plaît. It's an angle, just to see if we're on capable de... Okay, so it's better. I'm going to play with the guide, if you want. Okay, so we're just going to load the... A bit of cranial, s'il te plaît. A bit more of the cranial, s'il te plaît. I'm going to go a little more cranial, which is once we uh, have dealt with the patient. Okay. Off scuppy, s'il te plaît. Off scuppy, s'il te plaît. Okay. It's not encore aligné. Encore plus de cranial. Ça se rend bien. C'est pas encore là, là. Encore plus. Il n'est pas aligné. Okay. 
T'as pas l'air de marcher. Vas-y un peu plus. Euh, enlève un peu, vas-y un peu plus à gauche. Non, ça, ça, ça c'est mieux. Enlève un peu plus le canyon. Enlève, enlève, enlève. OK, bon. C'est parfait. Just trying to find the right angulation to be able to load the valve onto the balloon. Often it's more cranial, not in this case. Okay, uh, I'm going to connect the pacemaker, so the pacemaker is connected. We're going to flex as we go around. Okay, can we test the pacemaker, please? Okay, c'est bon. Okay, pacing off. Just testing the pacemaker. Uh, she's a bit bradycardic. Still in sinus rhythm. Maybe a little bit of widening of the QRS already. On peut retourner dans notre instance. Okay, on va juste centrer. Okay, c'est copy. Okay, ton pigtail n'est pas tout à fait uh, sur la valve. Hein? No. Just going to bring the pigtail down. We see the calcification, but just for the imaging. Perfect. And it was not able to be uh, down. No, that's as, bad as, as good as as good as we can do. Yeah. yeah, we might be half in the ventricle actually there. Probably, yeah. As long as we can get a shot, I think that's fine. Let we can get a picture. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna cross the valve. We've already we tested pass. the pacemaker. I think we'll do an angiogram here. Wait a minute. I will just bring it back. So we were aiming for 50-50. So we're going to do an angiogram here just to have a look. Okay. That's perfect. Merci. Okay. So, Cine, when you're ready, I'm going to shoot. Okay. Cine. We'll take an image. I'll see you I might advance it a little more. I find it a little bit high. On peut juste laisser jouer le l'arto, s'il te plaît. Yeah. As we see the left main, so I think we need to advance it just a little bit more, which you probably already did, Fleuro. Just a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to bring the pusher back. The flex is off. Flex is off. Okay. Pressure is low a little bit. We're going to get that pusher back. Okay, perfect. So we're going to get ready to pace. On est no, 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 prêt? No, pick the... Uh, 140, s'il te plaît. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, pacing on, 140. Dog bone. Inject. Okay. Let's go, full deployment. Balloon down. Pacing off. Okay, so we are in a bit of a junctional rhythm. YQRS. We'll see how she recuperates from that. We'll bring the system back. Okay. Yeah. Be careful. The tip. Yeah, we're just going to advance the lawyer. Okay. Push back. Okay, the pacemaker is disconnected. We're in a junctional rhythm right now. Ah, sinus is coming back. P waves are back. We're going to take the system out and we're going to check a gradient and obviously an aortogram to see the position of that left uh, main. Café Messi. So she's back in sinus she's rhythm. Back in sinus. Yeah. QRS is a little bit wider. Yeah. While pressure is good. And you actually can see a dichrotic notch on her aortic pressure tracing. 
just gonna advance our pigtail. A little bit of a waste in the valve. I'm not sure I would do much about that. We're gonna see what the uh, gradient is. Yeah. I think the important thing is here to avoid the uh, ocular reflex and really have a hemodynamic reason why you're gonna post dilate something. Flush. So not much in the way of a gradient here. She's got a good diastolic separation, which suggests she doesn't have much in the way of aortic insufficiency. But this end diastolic is high. End diastolic has gone up yeah. from 21 to 36. So what we're going to do is bring that pigtail out. Perfect. So she's got a gradient of two. We're going to take this out and do an aortogram. Certainly the rapid pacing, and you saw that she had quite severe AI while we were positioning, and all of those things probably contribute to this elevated uh, endiastolic pressure. But we're going to see, make sure we have nothing in the way of... Uh... Okay, you want to just hold it there? Okay, I'll do an angiocine, please. Okay, so we see nice filling of the left coronary. The big window of the sapien is in front. That's perfect. We see nice filling of the left. Don't see much in the way of AI. There's a little yeah, bit there. The leaflet but... is not moving. Mm. So our old thinks there's a lazy leaflet. So we're going to see if we can encourage that leaflet to function. So basically just using the pigtail to push down on the leaflet and see if we can get it to get in the right position. I'm not convinced that's what's going on, but we'll see. On a un peu de coda pour l'aligner, s'il te plaît. On peut juste aligner l'aval, donc euh, je ne sais pas comment. Est-ce que coda, on va voir si ça aide. Oui, ça va mieux. OK, we can do another shot. How much dye have we given? We've given 96 cc, so we can probably do another shot just to see. So we'll do another one, Sine. Bit of leak there, you but see, if this part is full. You see the left let on the on the left side. Mm -hmm. The other thing we could do is just make sure the valve is well expanded. So maybe we just go in an RAO and have a look, make sure it looks round. It tends to be more of a challenge with the self-expanding valve, but it's always good to check. Because it was quite a heavily calcified. I mean, it certainly looks well deployed. We'll just try to make it a little more. Peut-être un peu plus de cagnard, je suppose. Non, c'est pire. L'autre sens. There's a little waste there, but nothing dramatic. It looks well expanded. Oh, I was going to inject. Okay. Ready? Yeah, one second. Just reload. Okay, so we'll go again. Sine. Honestly, I wouldn't do much about that AI. She's 88 years old. We've got a good hemodynamic result. I would leave that. And uh, we can hope with the skirt to fix yeah, this. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any value in post dilating either. Oh, no. We can see our distance from the left corner. We have space. It's good filling. Okay. I think this is time now to focus on the vascular access closure. So we'll go back to AP. On lève l'aiguille. So I'm going to put a stiff wire here. And we're going to cross over. Okay. We're going to cross over and then we're going to do the Manta. Um, for those of you who saw our case last week, we do the Manta under ultrasound guidance. So I will just leave a stiff wire on the valve side, and then I'm going to cross over on the other side. We're going to leave our wire in, okay. though. Try not to take it out. Here, why don't you want to take this? Thanks. Advance the wire in there. Yeah, okay, I'll take a 35. Je prends le, le 35G pour faire le crossover. J'ai juste besoin de voir l'écran pour l'instant. Peut-être pas trop loin. Un bleu, un champ bleu, ça. 
What we're going to do is do our crossover that we discussed previously. So I can take the photo. On va juste enlever le point suture. Prends la mamère, s'il te plaît. C'est à droite, ça. So use a mammary catheter to cross over. We'll get our crossover access before we close the mantle. On peut donner de la protamine, s'il vous plaît. Moitié de And we're giving protamine. No wire. Maybe a mad if you want to come here next to me, please. Bounce. Okay. 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 You want to bring your sheath down? Okay, do you want the dilator? Yeah. Well, if you have please. the dilator. We're going to put the dilator back in the E sheath. I'm going to try to cross over. Imaging is challenging because of the size of the patient. Okay, so we're crossed over. And come down a little bit lower. Can you bring yourself down a little bit lower? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. Je pas compris. Ok. Euh, on va rapprocher le manta, s'il vous plaît. Est-ce qu'on va prendre le ultrasound, s'il vous plaît? On peut avoir ouais. le, le son ouais. d'écho, s'il te plaît? On peut reculer les écrans. On peut augmenter peut-être un peu les lumières. Parfait. On peut peut-être euh, tirer la table vers nous. Ok. We're just getting our ultrasound ready. Hmm? Okay. So I'll take out the sheath and then we'll put our manta delivery in while we're getting our ultrasound ready. So we already pre-measured. C'est quoi la mesure, uh, Lucie, encore? 4.5? Lucie? 5? Okay. Okay, so we're going to... Put our ultrasound and have a look. Okay, so while it's going to do the ultrasound, while I just take out the dilator, find a compressed sesh, typically. Let's see. A little challenging to see. So I'm going to do sync, is that? Okay. This one's a little bit harder to see. She has a small hematoma there from her right heart calf. Trying to compress my yeast, I believe. Okay. So in with the mantle. I'll make sure I can click, click. Okay. I'm just going to make sure we can see the measurement. Okay. So I'm going to call out the numbers. Okay, so I'm at 10, 9, 8. Do you see me? Yeah. Oh, you see the wire? 7, 6, 5. Anchors are open. Anchor. Okay. All right, 45 degrees. Pulling out. Green, blue. Green, yellow. Collagen is down. Yeah. Okay. Let's see in cross section if we see the results. Uh, we can show. Yeah, so you can see the, the collagen plug. The imaging's a little bit more challenging here, but we're going to take an angio now. So Ahmad's going to inject for us. Let's go parler en angulation, s'il te plaît. I'm going to take out the wire of the Manta device. Okay. So done again. A little bit of oozing in the track. Looks Venus, doesn't look arterial. Okay, you ready? Send it. Beautiful.
Perfect result. So you see the radio opaque marker of the Manta device? You see very nicely, there's no bleeding, there's no oozing. Vascular access looks good. We did see the plug, it was difficult here, but we did see the plug uh, on, uh, on Echo. So we will just cut this. Maybe we can just go back to the last slide. We can have a little bit of discussion as we're closing up here. This is just a copy. Also, can we see our last slide, please? We can go back to the slide presentation. I'm just compressing. There's a little bit of venous oozing here from her previous hematoma, I think. So, Raul, any final comments um, about what do you, Raul? Any yeah. final comments on uh, management of a patient who requires um, angioplasty with aortic stenosis? We talk about um, choosing a TAVI device. We talked about this already. Things to consider, management of coronary artery disease. Maybe Raul, you and, and Walid can talk a little bit about your approach to antiplatelet management. So how do you manage antiplatelet therapy in these patients while uh, Ahmad and I deal with the other side? Yeah, I think uh, there are many interrogation actually. And uh, especially with small valves like that, and without or with the treatment of the coronary artery disease, uh, the question mark will be that do we need some anticoagulation on that population, even if they are older, uh, just to prevent some of the uh, accident that we have seen. Uh, yeah, actually, I've seen in our experience here in Montreal Heart Institute, we saw a higher gradient with the 23 uh, Sapien 3 valve. So uh, doing a, a CT scan, uh, we saw a lot of uh, halts. So our approach here as a team is to put patient uh, uh, on DOAC for three months and to control this uh, with uh, a CT scan after three months. Uh, we have a limited experience with this, but uh, what we saw is uh, the gradient go down very fastly after one month. So we are talking of a mean of 16, 17th gradient. And after one month of DOAC, we, we saw a lot of patient in with 11 and even one digit uh, uh, gradient. So uh, we are continuing this experience, but we have point. to, actually we need more patient to, to validate this approach and uh, to validate both efficiency, but also uh, safety of uh, our approach. <laughs> yeah, especially, you know, I have the concern about to have the two antiplatelet therapy plus the NOAC uh, mm -hmm. on that population, the age of population, because there, the risk of the hemorrhagic risk is probably easier, going very uh, up, and i rather have a NOAC plus one antiplatelet and let's go the aspirin away and just keep the uh, NOAC plus uh, the plavix on that age <clears throat> and uh, re advise everything at six months or three to six months. Yeah, and I think it's very similar to these patients who have atrial fibrillation, right? That they need an angioplasty. Yeah. We don't really want triple therapy if we can help it. I think these patients are exactly the same. And so anything we can do to minimize risk of bleeding and, and complications associated with bleeding is, is super important. So for her, I, I think we're going to focus on um, probably a dose of a NOAC with a Plavix for, a lo for at least the next three months. And then we'll see how she does in terms of gradient, uh, follow-up CT scan. And if everything looks fine, then probably we can go back to a strategy of two antiplatelets and remove the actual anticoagulation. So we have no bleeding, the groins look good. We've got an angio seal on the left side. We have a manta on the, the right. She's got a previous hematoma from her procedure on Monday. But other than that, no bleeding. So, um, you know, we thank you for, for being uh, here to watch our case. I don't know if there's any questions on the Slido, if there's any comments that we can answer. If so if not, I think uh, thank you uh, on behalf of the rest of the team and uh, we hope you have a good afternoon.